that, but it's kind of cruel because seriously, these people need our pity. And they need our love. But where is harmful to you? It's harmful to other people. But have you ever thought what a wound in the heart of God that worry must be? How worry must hurt our God? Look in verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Now, little faith is an insult to God. If you were to speak about me and, and uh, say all sorts of nice things about me, and if you want to do that, I give you permission. I say all sorts of nice things about me, but then say there's one thing about Adrian, you can't trust him. Well, no matter what else you may have said about me, and then to say that I'm not trustworthy, you just cut the taproot of my character. You can say God is good, God is great, God is strong, God is grace, God is love, God is this, God is that, but I don't believe him. I don't trust him. Well, the Bible says he that believeth not God hath made him a liar. Do you see how worry, worry just says, God, Romans 8, 28 is not true. It says all things are working together for good to those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. Worry is an insult to the face of God. We have children, Joyce and I, had the joy of seeing our children grow up and our grandchildren now. But suppose when my children were small, I came home and found my four children in the corner, sniveling and crying and trembling. I would say, well, children, what's wrong? They would say, well, Dad, we're afraid that uh, the money's going to run out in the family. And uh, so therefore, we're going to have to move out of the house. And Dad, we're, we're afraid that, uh, we're afraid, Dad, that we're not going to have food to eat. And Dad, we're concerned that we're not going to have clothes to wear. And Dad, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. It may get worse. Dad, we're terribly concerned. Well, how do you think that would make me feel as a father if I saw my children feeling that way? That would grieve my heart will make me feel like my children feel like I cannot take care of them. The truth of the matter is that since I'm only human, I may not be able to take care of them. That is in and of myself. But be that aside, I would be deeply grieved to see my children sniveling and crying and trembling, thinking that their father was not able to take care of them. Worry says to our Heavenly Father, Father, this is too big for you. You can't handle this. I, it's beyond you, God. Uh, we are concerned about things that are going to get out of hand. And that's the reason he says, wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, verse 30, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And then he goes on to say in verse 31, Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Now watch this next phrase, and it'll hit you right between the running line. Verse 32. For after all these things do the Gentiles see. What he is saying is this. You are acting like pagans when you work. Worry is pagan. When he says the Gentiles, he's talking about the pagans. He said, that's the way the people of this world think. Now, we've talked about the things that we worry about, we've talked about that worry is harmful to us, it's harmful to others. It is an insult and a wound to the heart of God. It is the hallmark of small faith when we worry. Worry is faith turned inside out. That's all it is. Well, <laughs> Pastor, that's fine. You've got me under conviction. Can you give me some help? Well, God can, and he'll do it through his word, and I trust through his preacher tonight. Let me give you some factors that will help you. The first factor is what I want to call the father factor. Look, if you will, in verse 32. 
For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all of these things. I want you to see God as your Father. He is your heavenly Father. Now, we talk about our obligations to God. Has it ever dawned upon you that God has an obligation to you? When somebody brings a child into this world, do they not have an obligation to that child to take care of that child? Do you think that God someday is going to be accused of child neglect? Do you think that God brought you into this world, created you to begin with and redeemed you to forsake you? No. He that spared not his own son, but offered him up freely for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us all things? God loved you enough to send Jesus to die for you. You don't have to doubt his love anymore. And so there is the father factor. He is your father. Now you're in Matthew uh, chapter 6. Just turn over to Matthew chapter 10 for a moment. And look, if you will, in verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father but the very hairs of your head are numbered fear ye not therefore ye are of more value than many sparrows now if God attends the funeral of a sparrow and he does not a sparrow falls but what he knows about if God attends the funeral of a sparrow Is not your heavenly father going to take care of you? Put your trust in him. If God takes care of the birds, he's going to take care of us. So there's the father factor. Remember that he is your father. It's easy to forget in this big and personal world where you're simply another number. But the one who made you knows everything about you and cares for you. He is your heavenly father. And he puts great value on your life and your worries. Take them to him today and may he show you how much he cares. If you'd like a copy of today's lesson, call us. The title of the message is A Word for Worriers. The message is part of the album Under the Great Physician's Care. So call 1-877-LOVE-GOD or go to lwf.org to order just today's lesson or the six-message series. If you'd like to support us this month, we have the leather-bound tapestry hope and healing journal for you. It's just our way of saying thank you for your generous support. Call 877-LOVE-GOD. And join us again tomorrow when we'll hear more help for warriors here on Love Worth Finding.